Welcome to a world filled with textures. The plaza has now been updated, so if you haven't been here, definitely come and check it out. Look at the textures on this tree or this pillar. The plaza has been newly and freshly updated. You have to check it out. Horizon is going to soon be filled with these textures because you, yes, you can now use textures. But I got to show you my favorite, the mushrooms. Look at these mushrooms. These are incredible. Wow, hey Phoenix Rise, what's up? The mansion, freshly updated with textures. We got this crazy concrete, what? Look at all this, this looks so nice. It's really, really fine. I'm not even sure how close you're gonna be able to see it on the video, but this is looking really good. Look at this shine on the floor. Man, is it wax? That's awesome. These pillars are looking really good. I believe that's the sandy texture right there. Water textures, this is cool. I need to show Merc how to fix this. There's a way to fix this. I'll show you guys in this video. It's gonna be awesome oh yeah look at this basketball court now that is sweet oh the sandy beach that's so nice and this is one of my favorite new worlds also featuring textures look at that carpet the wood table is just fabulous and if you look you can see there's really this kind of nice clothy tone and this is murder village if you haven't been here check this world out just launched yesterday absolutely incredible to kick us off with textures i've prepared all 12 textures here and from a distance they're really not assuming that's what i love about the textures they've introduced to horizon they don't feel obtrusive they're very very light and match the overall theme that we've come to love with horizon and so if we come up closer you start to see them a little bit better like we can just now start to see the grass and the wood oh my gosh look at how good that looks and I have so much to talk about here but I'm gonna make it real fast so we can dive on in how to use this so the first thing you're gonna see here is we have the basic default texture this is applied to all blocks by default this is the grabbable version you have the shiny version on top and the non shiny version on bottom they refer to this as selecting the textures roughness but in all reality it creates this sheen and it's much more visible on darker objects like see this bottom one has 0% and this middle one has a hundred percent so it's very clear which one it is and even on grabbable objects you can see the difference between 0 and 100 is quite intense and so it's really quite neat so if we grab this one you can see it kind of reflects the light which is amazing there's a lot of possibilities with this depending on how you use it kind of looks like it's got a wax lacquer on it but this is the default texture and you can see there's little speckled dots here and this one here is called coarse chunks. So again, we have the shiny version and the non-shiny and you can choose anywhere between zero and 100%. So it doesn't have to be this shiny or it doesn't have to be this dull. And here we have fractured, which is just super cool. Kind of looks like paint, rock. There's a lot of possibilities here. You can also scale these differently. And if you look back here at coarse chunks, one thing you're gonna notice is this one here is small. It's as small as the texture can get. And then as we go down, it gets slightly bigger. So this is called medium and the bottom one is large. And so you can really expand the texture and customize it. I wish this was a slider feature so we could really fine tune this and get it exactly where we want. But for now, this is fine. I just love to see this a little bit smaller. I think it would give us a lot more options. And then as we continue on, we have speckled spots. It just looks really great. It makes an awesome grass texture. I just want to encourage you to try out using that roughness slider. See where you like it because sometimes I don't like my grass to be this shiny. I prefer it to be a little bit more doled out. And so that is just something to think about. So if you're thinking about it from a roughness perspective, you might be considering like 100% roughness on grass makes sense. But in reality, I think more like 0% because it really affects the sheen and the shine that it gets off. Now this is one I'm really excited to show you. This is the wood grain texture and it really does change everything. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you look here below, you're gonna see that I was able to make the wood grains connect. And the way this works is because when you apply a texture, you have two options. You can either apply it to the object or you can apply it non-aligned to the object. Now, if it's not aligned to the object, it's aligned to the world, which means it can overlap with other objects and create this really amazing continuous texture. And then over here, you can see when it's aligned to the object, it's in the exact same spot from object to object. So this object looks identical to this object, which looks identical to this object. Very important to note. So in most cases, you want to align to the object, but if you have multiple walls that are connecting together, using a line to the world or just not aligning to the object is going to give you this amazing like wood pillars, wood walls, etc. Very amazing. This next texture is called chipped spots. And as you can see, it's got little dots in it. Kind of makes it feel like you could put your finger in there almost. 
And after that, we've got wavy, which gives you that sort of impression of water. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, you can really see the difference between the 100% roughness and the 0% roughness. So definitely an amazing texture. Next up, we have coral. This is going to allow you to make, you know, brains among many other things. Like the mushrooms we saw in the plaza were absolutely gorgeous and they use the same texture. It's definitely one of my favorites. I highly recommend using it, but use it in small quantities. You don't want to go over the top. You can definitely make something look really fancy, really amazing with this. But if you, you know, go over the top with it, you're going to really wear it out. Splotches. Look at this. These ones are kind of like bigger dots, but you've got some lighter dots and there's, it's really nice. It's just another kind of concrete-ish texture, which is cool that we can have different variations on our cements. Take a look at sharp angles. This is one of my favorites to use on rocks and like rock walls and mountains. It's just, it's really quite nice. Look at Sandy. Sandy, you might be thinking, oh, beaches, duh. But there's so much more you can do with this. Merck was telling me that he's using it on like cloth to make it look like you have cloth hanging down because it's got these really nice waves in it. And I just think we're going to be able to do so much with these textures just by being creative in the way that we use them. And last but not least, we have Puffy. Oh, look at this. Whether using it for dirt or in Martian surface, this is really quite something, isn't it? Textures are going to change our worlds. And we are so very excited to show you in Logger how we can change this world very quickly. So if we go into build mode, pull down on your right joystick, let's take a look at this world. We have not touched it with textures yet. And you can already see that the ground is pretty shiny by default because that's at 50% by default. So if we go to our style tab, underneath the color material, you're gonna see textures now. And here we can drag with our pointer by clicking and holding. We can select from the 12 textures that we just looked at. We can adjust the roughness right here so we can change that slider very easily. And I know for my dirt, I wanna use that puffy we were just looking at. So I'm gonna select the color by joysticking to the left. And then there's a bug right now where you have to unselect the texture and then reselect the texture. And then we have to readjust our roughness. And so we're gonna bring that down, maybe just a little bit of roughness. And we're going to then apply it. It gets rid of that shine we were seeing. And now we've got this really beautiful look, but I'm thinking I kind of want to make these bigger because this is at the smallest. So if we go to the bottom, you can see small, medium, and large. So we're going to select large and then let's just go ahead and apply that. There we go. Very nice. And now we're going to go to these trees and these trees have a really nice color. So we're going to select the color by joysticking to the left with the paint tool selected. That's going to give us the eyedropper tool. So that's how we select it. See the eyedropper appears with that color selected. We'll adjust our roughness to be lower again. And we're going to scroll over to the wood grain texture, select that and drop that on our tree. Now, one thing you're going to notice is it's going in the wrong direction. This is another bug with textures. It is being actively worked on. We should see this fixed, which is why I have no problem leaving it like this. For now, it kind of looks like a birch tree almost in that texture grain, but it'll eventually be pointing upwards, which is kind of what I'd prefer in this case. So we're going to go to all the trees and we can just quickly drop that on our trees. But before we go any further, let's talk about the green tops. So once again, we're going to joystick to the left to select that green color. Head on in and let's see which one of these is going to work best. There's obviously a lot of great options, but I'm feeling these speckled spots. I think that's going to look the best. We're going to go with large speckled spots. I don't want it to be plastic. Let's go with solid and we'll stick with the 50%. I think roughness is going to be good there. Oh, nope. That's still a little too shiny. Let's go down. And you know what? That looks maybe too much like a stone to me. So I'm thinking let's try and find something a little more organic than that. Um, we could do simple noise. That's our generic one. That's by default. And puffy might be the best though. Yeah, puffy's not one thing bad. Too. So Merck has just informed us if we select this texture, come back in, you're going to see the textures automatically selected. If we just simply turn off a line to object, we get it going in the right direction. Wow. Wow, that is so useful. Man, I hope we get an option to like rotate these textures in the future. I mean, like I shouldn't complain. We've now got textures, but this is just so exciting and cool. We're going to stop here. As you can see, it's really easy to apply textures, but there's more to talk about. Like if we open up the properties of this grouped object and we go in zoom in and now we're going to open up this half torus. We can zoom out now. And if we go to the attributes tab on this half torus, when you scroll down, you're now going to see texture where you can literally change the texture from here. So we could change it to, so that's really interesting. They're using different names inside of this menu. 
So <laughs> default, we can change it back to the default. We can go back to wood grain. There we go. And what's interesting here is it doesn't appear to give us an option to change the world setting. So you can see that it's applied to the object. And so apparently we need to use our menu. And I've been using the menu almost explicitly. I haven't really touched this. I just think it's really neat to know that this information is here. And so what I'm gonna do to quickly change this back is select by joysticking to the left. When I use my eyedropper tool, I collect all those settings and I can immediately apply it to anything else, which is really, really fabulous. And and one thing you're going to know about painting in Horizon is having an area like this where you have like kind of your favorite textures, your favorite settings, you can save them and then eyedropper tool in here to select one. Like I just selected this wood grain texture and I can come over here and then apply it. And look at that. Isn't that amazing how quickly I could grab a texture that I have already pre-saved and just come back in. Now, of course, I want my trees to look the same, so I'm going to go switch it back. But very, very cool. And so really, I wouldn't, don't know that I'd recommend using this attributes tab, but it's nice to know that it's here so you can quickly look and see what the settings are set to. Last but not least, let's talk about this water. So we're going to select the color of the water. We're gonna come back in here and we're gonna to go to waves and I'm gonna make these large waves and we're going to drop this in here. And you can see this looks really good already. The problem I have with waves is it's not moving. And this is probably something that geniuses are gonna be working on. But for now, what I think the best option for water to make it move, you have two choices. Once you have your water cube like this, you have two options in my opinion. If it's aligned to the object, you can simply go to animated and hit record and then turn off snapping and slide left. And then we hit stop and then loop back and forth and then hit play on start. And then we'll change the speed to be point one. And so now that we've animated this with point one on our move, you can see that the waves are slowly moving and it, it's a little more realistic. I don't know that it's my favorite, but it's a lot better than it not moving. And so we simply mask the edges by using these dirt hills and dirt mounds. And now we can jump on it. And <laughs> of course it's not collidable. So as you'll remember from our logger episode, if you haven't seen it, link in the description, link right here somewhere. But we used two objects, as you can see from here, that top one is non-collidable, but the bottom is collidable. And that's how we're able to jump into the water. And that just adds a whole nother level of realism. Turn a line to texture off. It's worth noting that for the previous example, it had to be on, but if we use it as off on both of these, we will now have it matched to the world. And so when this rolls by, instead of looking really cheesy, it looks like it's kind of lifting the water up a little bit. And so let's go try animating this and see what it looks like. This will be a first for me too. So I'm kind of curious to see if it's as good as I think it should be. Yeah, that's really interesting. So the texture, when you apply to the world, it doesn't change when it's moving in the world. It's applied when the world starts. That's really unique to know. And that, my friends, is your crash course in textures. If you have any questions or you have any tips, definitely leave them in the comments. <laughs> Knowledge sharing is what we're here for. Absolutely love it. We just say, you know, get started, dive right in, have some fun with it. Don't overuse it. Be very careful with that roughness slider. I'd say 0% is safe. Anything above that, you got to kind of know what you're doing. Do you really want it to have that varnish or shine? So that's how we've done it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share the video. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.